Hey, welcome back to my channel, everyone. If you're just joining us here, this is part three of a five-part series called the built-in bench seat. If you want to see how this turns out, I've already posted the final video where I install it in the cabin. Uh, I'll put a link to that video. So what I'm doing right now is I'm using this domino strictly for alignment for the glue up. Uh, it doesn't add any strength to a glue up, but it saves you some sanding and some frustration when you go to clamp everything together. These two book matched pieces of ash are going to go inside the face frame that I'll eventually hand cut in this video. I'm using the cross cut sled here so I can get perfectly square cuts for these face frames, which is really important. Here they are laid out. I've marked, I've marked each of the joints with a circle, a triangle, and a square so we can keep the grain oriented properly. All right, so off camera, I have dimensioned my wood and I've cut three mortise and tenon joints by hand just because I want to be able to have that skill. Um, so the first one right here came out like total garbage. The second one came out a little bit better and the third one was acceptable. So we're gonna do the fourth one on camera together. I'm gonna take my marking gauge and I'm gonna set it to be the width of this board. And I'm just gonna take this, referencing off the face frame, putting pressure this way but not extreme pressure down and then just slightly work my way across and you know despite every woodworker on youtube telling me not to put up too much pressure and not to rush it the first couple markings i did i still screwed up so i'll warn you guys and then you can screw it up too Just stay nice and light. Pressure into the workpiece. Okay, that's one. And now I'll reference off of this face here. Another. Starting light and then going deeper once you've got it scored. And then I'll transfer these from the reference side with the square. So we got that all marked out. All right, now we're gonna finish cutting the tenons. So after I marked off the end from this width of this piece, I cut these tenons down to an inch and three eighths because that's as thick as my saw can rip. Um, now we're gonna finish marking them out. And I have this marking gauge here, which I went out and bought after having this marking gauge and there's a couple reasons why i decided to go out and get this one um, one a big one is the, the circular cutter heads have a lower angle of attack um, so you can you can make your mark easier uh, with less pressure um, the other thing i like is that you can do one mark say we're doing this you can do one mark at a time um, which makes it easier to avoid screwing up Whereas with these, you have a very steep angle of attack and you have to do two at a time. Another minor annoyance with this one is that it will not go narrow enough for a quarter of an inch. Uh, let's finish doing these. So we're gonna do these one at a time, referencing off the face edge. So we'll just go and get our big, nice and light. And we can make it firmer. I'm doing the inside one first now i'm going to do the outside one and we'll just continue that all the way around i'll do the other one off camera go over it with the pencil so you can see the pencil will really help when uh, cutting it out with your saw and mark our waist so that that's what i've done all the way around so i've set this gauge to mark off for the haunch we're gonna do that really lightly. I've already lightly scored it. 
I'm just gonna make it darker. Push down a little bit more. All right, so that's this thing that I've just marked for. Back this, we're gonna back this off about quarter of an inch and that's gonna mark the end of our bordis. We'll do the same thing over here. Okay, so I've, uh, I've marked my waist and I've gone over this with the pencil. So we're gonna clamp this and we're gonna saw on the waist side. And I've got it at an angle so that I can sight the front side and the back side. And you, just, you really wanna have a nice loose grip Hold the saw like this loose and just let the weight of the saw do the work. Making sure your line of sight is good and just sawing at an angle. And as long as you saw on the wayside, you can clean it up later with any number of tools. And we'll do this other one too while we have it clamped in this direction. So. I'm just starting it with a small little nibble. Okay, so now we will make sure I've gone all the way to the marking line but not over it, which it looks like I have. Now we'll turn this around. do the same thing for the other side. All right, now I have a hump in the middle. I'm going to just put this upright. And this is what it looks like once it's sawed through. It doesn't have to be perfect as long as you stay on the waist side because we're going to come back and clean it up later with a different tool. I had to speed this video up because I share this shop with my friend. It's actually his shop and he was cutting metal. So what I'm doing is cutting out the haunch side and then the opposite side you cut in quarter inch short just to cover up that joint. All these cuts are an eighth of an inch to a millimeter away from my marking line because we go back after and clean it up with a chisel to get the most accuracy. A router plane is a really good way to clean this up and make sure that both sides have the same depth. Uh, and the other tool that is helpful here is a shoulder plane, which I'll be using in a couple seconds here. All right, so we're gonna mark our tenons. I've got my gauge that I never changed, and we're just gonna run this across there and then I set this to half an inch and we're just going to make a mark right here for the haunch and then we're going to take our marking gauge referencing off of our face frame side and we're going to do the same thing we're going to mark this and it's going to tell us where we need to make our mortise. Now, sighting down this, we're just going to hack out our material. Being very careful to keep the chisel straight up and down. Okay, so I got this cleaned out and it just needs some cleanup with a chisel. Alright, I got the haunch cut out on that. 
All right, so now all we gotta do is just clean up along this marking line here. So we'll do that real quick. So the big thing with chiseling one more time is, is making sure you have a really good line of sight. You can see I'm right behind the chisel and looking at it uh, straight on and then not taking too much material at a time. I'm making several passes. What I'm doing is having the material uh, until I can't cut it in half anymore. And then once I've got about a millimeter left, then I'm going right into the marking line and being really careful and, and also giving a slight undercut. You can see I'm giving a slight undercut right there. And then you just keep doing that process, taking your time and clean it up when it's all done. All right, so that's pretty good. And we just gotta get the router plane or the shoulder plane and just clean up that tenon. Okay, and now I'm just going around and relieving all the edges. Uh, this just gets filled with glue anyway. Um, and, and you'll notice that not all the pieces are the same pieces here because of different stuff going on in the shop and background noise and lighting. Uh, I had to take the best stuff from each one to put together a complete video. So if, if you see a mark on one that's not there the next frame, it's, it's probably because it's a different part of the face frame. I cut four of these all together. It's not that great, but it looks pretty good on the sides. All right, let's put this thing together. Fair, it's fair. It'll get clamped a little bit. Clamped and plain. It won't be perfect, but it won't be horrible. Okay, so now I did this glue up earlier for this is for the face frames of the drawers. And you know, I'll put this on here and I'll trace every one of them and I'll make it like a I don't know, three-eighths of an inch wider than I trace and then those frames will go inside these and we'll have to use a slot router and cut a, cut a hole there.
All right, I got these all sanded down. They look a lot better now that they're sanded. And it came out mostly pretty good. A couple issues um, right here. So this is getting a little overzealous with the chisel. When you take too much material, it'll push into your marking line. And then there's maybe a gap over there. Uh, or this gap in here is is probably a marking line error. Um, um, letting the letting the marker go like non-flush. Um, that's what I'm guessing that is. And uh, there's a little. That is from just taking too much material with a chisel. Uh, either that or not having it perfectly on the marking line. But by and large, they mostly came out pretty good. Uh, this is all. Uh, this is book matched. Um, so these are all book matched, and it is all two boards that are glued up and, and lined up even though you can't really tell. And then these are lined up as well. Um, here, 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 here the grain flows through. It always happens. All right, so I've got these clamped down how I want them. All this grain lines up, this lines up, this lines up. And I've kind of eyeballed these gaps and I've got enough room on either end. So now I'm just gonna go and screw them in from this side. screws. Side and then uh, figure out some kind of. I don't know if I want to do a hole or if I want to do hardware. 